Live from the Sky News Weather Centre, this is the 10 Minute Briefing. Good morning, thanks so much for joining us here at Sky News Weather. Just on 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and 8 a.m. in the West, I'm Rachel Ray. This is our Chief Meteorologist, Tom Saunders. And on the briefing this morning, we are getting excited here at Sky News Weather. Finally, we're delivering some good news for farmers across the nation. We're looking at widespread rain over the next week. Speaking of rain, Tom, Sydney had some wet weather uh, this morning. Actually, first, before we get to Sydney, I'm getting a bit excited here. Let's get to Melbourne because it was foggy right across uh, many areas of Melbourne this morning. Our visibility at Avalon Airport was down to 50 metres at one point. Uh, now, what's happening with this fog? A definite pea super this morning, wasn't it? But it is now starting to clear up. So we had fairly widespread fog, not just Melbourne, the west coast of Victoria, Gippsland had thick fog, sail visibility was below 50 metres, and we had some patchy fog through Tasmania and eastern parts of South Australia. But the sun's out, and as a result, that fog is now burning off. Some good news is that we didn't see thick fog across Melbourne airports, so no major delays, if any. Yeah, absolutely. I wonder if there were delays at Avalon Airport, actually. We'll have a look into that. OK, let's now head to Sydney. I was too excited about it. Uh, wet weather this morning in Sydney. Many people pulling out their brollies and their wet weather attire. Tom, we did see over 50 millimetres at some places in the 24 hours to 9am. I couldn't find my umbrella. I don't think I, after the last three months, it's been so dry, I probably thought I didn't need it anymore. But yes, we've had 50 millimetres plus for some coastal suburbs and that's easily been the heaviest rain in three months for coastal parts of Sydney. We've had some good falls the last couple of days through the Hunter. Nelson Bay, for example, they've picked up over 200 millimetres over the past week. And we have had, have had quite a few showers along the New South Wales coast. They're continuing into today as well, Tom. Certainly are. Let's have a look at the radar, which will show the heavy falls that we did see overnight around Sydney. That's indicated by the darker echoes. That rain actually eased off just before sunrise. You can see there most of the showers actually clearing from Sydney temporarily, but they're returning. In fact, right now some heavy showers over the southern parts of Sydney. They're just over Cronulla at the moment. Notice those dark echoes. Mm. And showers are about to hit the northern beaches as well. Up around Newcastle, we've got some rain. So many good falls through New South Wales. Bigger had over 25 millimetres. I think Port Macquarie as well picked up over 25 millimetres of rain. And we're going to see the good falls continuing today. Showers with the odd storm along the New South Wales coastal fringe. And heavy showers and storms will also just gradually spread further north onto the southern Queensland coast over the next couple of days. Now for Sydney, the showers will ease tonight. They'll actually mostly clear away by Thursday morning. Now let's head to the other side of Australia because we do have some heavy rainfall and more heavy rainfall on the way. Karatha in the northwest of Western Australia picked up uh, more than a month's worth of rain in an hour. For the southeast of, uh, for the southwest, pardon me, we have seen uh, those that rain tend to showers. Yeah, so it's eased off around Perth and the winds have dropped back yesterday morning. Thousands of properties were left without power with wind gusts exceeding 100 kilometres per hour along the west coast. Now, Rotten Estale and that was taken yesterday Beautiful rainbow, though, mm. and they're loving the rain. The farmers through WA, after such a dry start to the wet season, we've picked up really good falls over the last couple of days. Uh, let's have a look now at the radar then. Uh, so through the northern part of WA, we're still seeing heavy rain, and there is a warning in place for flash flooding. Take a look at that moisture pouring down from the Indian Ocean. You mentioned Karatha. We've had big falls. We've had nearly 100 millimetres of rain at Onslow since 9 a.m. yesterday. That's their heaviest June rain since 1951. They picked up at one stage 32 millimetres in one hour. There's a warning in place as a result. Now, this is the forecast rain for the rest of today, then. Uh, what we're looking at is good falls for the eastern part of WA. The heaviest falls, though, indicated by the red and the black shading around the Pilbara coastline. That area, of Rachel, could see another 100 millimetres today. This is great news for farming areas, Tom. Uh, now, that same northwest cloud band is going to be bringing some showers, some rain, in fact, to the southeast, which is great news. OK, this is what we're really excited about because yeah. WA, OK, you've had some rain now. It's time <laughs> for southeastern Australia to get some rain. Well, it is coming. A northwest cloud band, the first one of the year, will cause light rain to develop across South Australia on Thursday. But then on Friday, take a look at this. Widespread, moderate rain spreading across the Murray Basin. Uh, including most farming areas of South Australia, but there it is, northern Victoria, southern mm. New South Wales. I mean, these are the areas that have been areas that have been so dry so far this year. Now, Broken Hill, it's been the driest start to a year on record. And we're going to get a second band of rain coming through early next week. Now, you put the two together, this is what we expect. It's about 25 to 50 millimetres along the Murray River. Uh, Rachel, that's easily the heaviest rain we've had so far this year. Great news, great news. I love seeing all of that rain. Now, could this lead to flash flooding, Tom? Possibly, but who cares? I mean, we'll take flash flooding. It's unlikely. The ground's so dry. Mm. No, it's, this, is not, this is not flash flooding. This is steady rain, which is what farmers like. They don't like rain from storms. It comes down too quickly, 
And sometimes you can get flash flooding and then all that water runs away. So you've lost the water that's falling out of the sky. But this is soaking, steady rain. It'll sink into the soil. You'll get some moisture in the soil. You can get your crop going. Of course, we'll get some grass growing after this rain through, for example, central New South Wales, where it's very dry. However, northern New South Wales and Queensland, not this time. All right, hopefully, hopefully soon. But that's good news. It's coming from Western Australia into the southeast of the country. All right, we're going to take a very short break now, but stick with us. We'll be back in just 60 seconds with some international weather news where we've got some amazing footage of a geyser uh, erupting in the United States of America. Mm, I think the last time I said something in the middle of the 10-minute briefing, there was the same ad. This one, the Tony Awards. It's kind of interesting. Um, they're about to show some footage of the steamboat geyser, which is something I've been talking about for a while now. And, yeah. This is really strange because I've talked about Samuel, who is turning 9 very soon, on the 24th of June. That's Samuel M. And I know another Samuel, they're both the same age, roughly. Well, they were, they were born 175 days apart, to be exact. So Samuel M, who is from Indonesia, he's turning 9 on Sunday the 24th of June, 2018. It's his birthday. Two fours are eight. And as they say in this video, the steamboat geyser has erupted eight times this year after being completely quiet for the previous three or four years it's now erupted eight times this year and Nathan said there was going to be a triplet sign on my birthday now that was before I even knew what the steamboat geyser was I was saying there's going to be a triplet sign on my birthday well the third eruption of the steamboat geyser was on my birthday Friday the 27th of April now Samuel J the other Samuel his birthday is on Sunday, the 16th of December, 2018. Now, if you take Steamboat Geyser, all those letters, add them up according to their place in the alphabet, they have the same value as Volcano Papandayan, 175, 175. That's the number of days in between Samuel's birthday, Samuel M's birthday, on Sunday, 24th of June, and Samuel J's birthday on Sunday the 16th of December 2018 175 it gets even weirder because Samuel M his full name has a value of 175 and these are two boys who know each other one like I said is from Indonesia where he was born in Indonesia Samuel M was born in Jakarta Samuel J is part Palestinian I don't know, maybe this is like a message. Maybe it's a message against Israel for the way it treats Palestinians. Or maybe it's a message against Australia's government for the way it treats refugees. All those people on Nauru and Manus Island that have just been left there for so long. There's something in this, I know that. The next ad, check this out. The next ad is Transformers. And if you're familiar with Transformers, what comes into the Transformers movies? The Pacific Ring of Fire. The Pacific Ring of Fire includes Indonesia, it includes Hawaii, and it includes Guatemala, where we just had a huge volcano go off a couple of days ago. The Pacific Ring of Fire. Transformers. Samuel, the Samuel who is from Jakarta, he drew this picture and this is for Halloween pranks, is how he finished up signing it off. Kiss and a hug. I am your friend. I actually do think Samuel tapped into something when he drew this because it's got nothing to do with what I asked him to draw me a little picture of the Titanic and <laughs> he drew this so yeah that's Samuel that's Samuel M who is 8 and obviously turning 
9 in 18 days. Because today is the 6th. It's the 6th of June, the 6th of the 6th, 2018. 6 plus 6 plus 6 is 18. Wow. So Samuel M. Samuel J. 175 days in between their birthdays. And that's their birthdays. So something's going to happen on those dates. Maybe. If you come back 8 days before this date, Sunday 24th of June, it will be Saturday the 16th of June. And Jake's telling me something's going to happen on Saturday the 16th of June and Sunday the 24th of June. And this date, the other Samuel's birthday, is 22 days after Nathan's birthday. Nathan's birthday is on Saturday this year, the 24th of November. So there's some more dates to consider. Anyway, let's have a look at this steamboat geyser because it's pretty impressive, I have to say. Welcome back to your 10 minute briefing. Thanks for joining us here at Sky News. Well, we did see some good falls this morning, overnight, yesterday, uh, around Sydney. This is what it was looking like over the Harbour Bridge. Luckily, you can still see the great view. I love the Harbour Bridge in Sydney. That's more like it, though. June. I think June has the highest, highest rainfall of any month in Sydney. Very close, uh, tied with probably... Uh, February or March, so it's definitely the wettest time of year. It's about time we had some rain. Yeah, and it is good. Just make sure you take a brolly with you to work. All right, let's head now to some international weather news, where in the United States, millions of visitors flock to the world's first national park every year, which is Yellowstone National Park. And their steamboat guys are erupted for the eighth time this year, resulting in this many happy people. And uh, it's been reported that it's uh, it went about... 300 to 400 feet into the air. That's impressive. That's about 100 metres. Mm. That's, uh, yeah, the Kayama blowhole. You've got nothing on this one. This is impressive stuff, isn't it? Oh, I love the Kayama blowhole. What's happening here is underground water sinks even two kilometres down into the ground where it interacts with magma, extremely hot rock or lava, as it's called when it comes out of the earth. As a result, it heats up, it bubbles away, and that increases the pressure, and then boom, I guess very similar to how a volcano works, the mechanism here with that geyser spewing water into the sky. Tom, could that, given that that is going so high into the air, create some cloud and come back down as rain? Well, it definitely can create cloud because that's how clouds form when you have air rising and if there's moisture in the air, it condenses into cloud. Well, in this case, uh, you've got uh, all that steam coming out already and because it's hot, it's going to rise. I looked into this. I couldn't find any evidence that it's ever caused rain, though. But you would think it would be possible. All right, well, I'll wait to see that. Maybe you can conduct an experiment and tell us But it's the butterfly effect, though. I mean, it could be one of the causes of rain, perhaps not just the only cause. All right, well, let's head now and head back to Australia and have a look where there's no geysers erupting, which is in Queensland, not any that I know of. I don't think we've got any uh, magma in Australia. No, <laughs> there's no active volcanoes in Australia. But for Queensland, you will see some showers along the southern coastline developing showers and even the odd thunderstorm. There's the forecast today then. Uh, there's really not much happening for the rest of the state. We've got showers and the risk of storms on the New South Wales coast. Only light showers reaching the top of the ranges. And we'll be another dry day through the west. But your rain is coming. Thursday to Saturday, finally some rain. Mm. Your shower for far eastern Victoria, otherwise it's dry. 18 in Melbourne. State of origin tonight should be about 12 degrees at kickoff. There's no chance of rain, so it's good news. Showers will develop along the northern parts of Tasmania. Only light showers, just on shore winds there. Drizzly falls around Davenport and burning throughout right the rest of the state. Cloud increasing across western South Australia. Light showers developing through the west down towards Kangaroo Island. Now, Adelaide won't see rain today, but you'll get rain developing tomorrow. And it looks like it'll probably peak perhaps Friday morning for Adelaide. Showers continuing to the southwest land division. Increasing as another front comes through this afternoon. Even the odd storm around the southwest and lower west is heavy rain to the Pilbara with risk of flooding and a strike across the NT. Thanks, Tom Saunders. Alice Springs, 22 degrees. That hasn't been as chilly this morning in Alice Springs as the other winter mornings, has it? No frost. No frost this morning. Good morning to you in the Alice. All right, we are going to wrap it up there, but do st stay tuned because your Capital City forecast is coming up shortly and it does include the weekend forecast right around the country for every Capital City. Thanks so much for joining us as always on Sky News Weather. Our message against racism. That's what it is. That's what Samuel's picture is and his drawing and that's what the message of the two Samuels and their birthdays 
is about. It's a message against racism. I am your friend. It's a message against the message that is being put out by Donald Trump and Peter Dutton, which is not a nice message. It's a message against racism. That is what this is. Like I said, Samuel J is part Palestinian, Samuel M is Indonesian, Samuel M turns 9 on Sunday, 24th of June, Samuel J turns 9 on Sunday, 16th of December. The number of days in between happens to be the full value of Samuel M's name. 175, Volcano Papandayan, Steamboat Geyser.